Pivot tables are a useful tool in geoscience. It helps us to summarize and interrogate our data. We sometimes call it by-processing. For example, you might want to know what's the average porosity by formation. Or, in the case of this production data set that we'll be interrogating, we'll be asking questions like, what's the average oil production by field? Or, what's the average production by field and formation? The data set that we'll be looking at in this tutorial is production data from Natrona County, Wyoming for the year 2000. It contains a wellbore identifier for some 2300 wells, the name of the operating company, the name of the field, the total production for the year 2000 in oil equivalent barrels, and then we break it out into barrels of oil and gas in oil equivalent barrels. We also have gas reported in thousands of cubic feet. We know the formation age and the formation names. The other thing is that we have oil gravity data, which we'll have to scroll down. As we can see, not every well has a reported oil gravity. So the first thing we need to do is we need to insert the pivot table. So on the main menu, we go to insert, and we see pivot table. As long as we're in any cell within this table, it would automatically bring up the table range. Otherwise, you'll have to manually specify it. In this case, we'll put it into a new worksheet and click OK. We're now ready to make a pivot table. Let's quickly look at what's in front of us. We have an area where the pivot table will go, and we have a listing of our pivot table fields. We have two main part, two main ribbons. We have the analyze ribbon and we have a design ribbon. So the analyze ribbon is divided up into multiple sections. So pivot tables, active fields, group, filter, data, actions, calculation tools, and show. We won't be using all of these sections and we'll use these as we go. One important feature to note is that for the pivot table fields, we can flip it on and off with this button up here. So click and it's away. Click and it returns. The other ribbon available to us in pivot tables is the design ribbon, which basically lets us adjust the layout. There are some style options and then there are these styles. And we'll see that later on in the tutorial. So let's begin interrogating our data. We'll primarily be working in the pivot table fields box, which contains a list of our variables. It allows us to filter our variables. We can present our by variables in either rows or columns, and then we can summarize our values here. In our first example, let's find out how many oil equivalent barrels were produced by formation age. So we'll start by finding formation age in our variables list and dragging it down into the rows. And as you can see, we now have a list of our formation ages. Let's change that title there very quickly to FM age. OK, you'll notice that a strange thing has happened here, that when we put in formation age and I clicked in a cell outside the pivot table, we lost our pivot table ribbon and our pivot table fields box. So let's get back. Just click inside the pivot table. And you'll see we're back in the pivot table tools. And we have our pivot table fields box back. So let's continue. Let's bring in the OEBs. And now we have a, a sum of the OEBs. Let's format this table a bit and make it a little bit easier to read. We'll highlight the column B and control 1 and bring up the number box and make it zero decimals and we'll put in thousand separators using commas. And now click in any cell within the pivot table, right click, go to sort and we'll sort from largest to smallest. 
So now we can see that the upper Cretaceous is the most productive age, followed by lower Cretaceous and Paleocene, and so forth. Now let's say we want to know how much of that total OEB is oil and how much is gas. So we'll go up to oil barrels and drag that in to our values box. And we have oil. And let's get gas OEB and bring that in as well. As we look at this chart, we can see that the grand total of production is almost 14 million barrels for 2000. About three and a half of that is oil, and the remaining is gas. So it's mostly gas production. But it's kind of hard looking at this table to see what the proportion of oil and gas is. So this is when pivot charts might come in handy. So if we click on the Analyze button, we go to the pivot charts. And let's do a combination plot. And let's make the total a line. And let's make the sum of oil and gas into uh, stacked columns. OK. So to make it a little bit more readable, I like to have my oil and gas in green and red, respectively. So I'll just click on this box and right click, Format Data Series, go to Fill, and let's make this a solid color and make it green. And we'll make the gas red. So now we have a fairly quick analysis of the proportion of oil and gas by zone. And we can see that it is primarily gas production in the upper Cretaceous. But this is the most oil producing reservoir for these Cretaceous and tertiary reservoirs. And these lower or deeper and older formations primarily produce oil. Let's try another evaluation. Let's say we want to know what the wells produce on average. So we don't really need this chart anymore. Let's get rid of it. Click anywhere here in the cells. And we can see here in the pivot table fields box under our sums of values. It, all, it defaults to sum with a number. You have this little down triangle here. If you click on that, you can see that you have value field settings. And you click on that, and you're, here are the, the parameters that you can change this to. So let's just change that to average. And now it says average OEBs. There are two other ways that you can change the field value settings. You can either click in the box of any field and right click and look for value field settings and change it to average here. And the third way you can do this is just to click in the box and under the Analyze tab, you can see the field settings here. Click on that and change it to Average. So there are three different ways to change that. Let's say we now want to know how many wells it took to produce these barrels. So if we go up to the top here of our field lists, find Wellbore ID, and we'll drag that down. And it says sum of wellbore ID. Now numbers default to sums, and text will default to account. And since the format of our wellbore ID is a number here, we'll have to change that. So I'll just use the twisty, change the value field, and get account. So we can see that 
the upper Cretaceous required 1,866 wells. Uh, I'm getting a little lost here, so I'm going to get rid of our gas and just drag it into the spreadsheet and get rid of the oil and we'll go back to sum on the OEBs and now you can see how many wells it took to produce each barrel and if you took the ratio of these you'd find out which was the really the better zone which produced the more barrels with the fewest wells now let's say we want to know which fields are the most productive so if we find field name and we'll drag it down into our rows box we'll get rid of field age and let's sort by some OEB from largest to smallest so let's take a look here we see that Waltman is the most productive Salt Creek Cooper Reservoir, Frenchy Draw, Teapot Naval Reserve, and Saddle Rock. Let's, want, let's say we want to look at this in more of a graphics mode. So let's go back to Pivot Charts and let's take a pie diagram. And now you can graphically see that Waltman produces over half of the production in the year 2000, followed by Salt Creek and Teapot Dome is over here as just a sliver. Looking at the table, you'll notice that Waltman produced over 8 million barrels with 90 wells, while the next largest field produced one quarter of that with 10 times as many wells. It indicates that Waltman is a very productive field. Let's break this down a little further. Let's find out by field and by age what the production is. So we'll come back here to our formation age and we'll drag it below the field name. So now when we look at this chart we get a breakout by age and we get these subtotals. Let's see if we can't make this a little bit easier to look at. We'll go back into design mode and let's find something like this maybe which helps us to see that the subtotals here are highlighted and each of these are broken down and a quick scan of this tells us that the upper Cretaceous is still the better producer so let's do a little filtering here say we just wanted to know this information for a particular age so if we take formation age and bring it into the filters box we get a filter button here at the top and we have a drawdown and let's say we're only really interested in the Pennsylvanian so now we have a short list of the Pennsylvanian production and the fields that they're producing from so out of curiosity let's find out which is the better producing Pennsylvanian field. So I'll just right click in any of these cells, go to sort from largest to smallest, and we'll see that Noches followed by Lost Dome, Casper Creek, and then Salt Creek, and then Teapot Dome in that order. So let's get back to where we were before we did the filter and without the chart. So first thing, let's get rid of the filter. And let's get rid of this chart. And let's bring back the count of wellbore ID. So I'll drag that down. Use the twisty, value field settings, and get a count. And let's bring formation age back into this mix. For some analyses, we'd like to have 
our by variables broken out into different columns. So we'd want the age and the field name in different columns. To do that, we can do what's called the classic mode. So I'll click in here, and the first thing I'll do is I want to we're going to try to calculate the productivity of the wells by field by age. I'm going to put the age above it. So we've reformatted this a little bit. Now I'm going to put it into classic mode. And to do that, we go to Analyze, Options, Display. Then down in here we find Classic Pivot Table Layout. We'll click on that. And now we can see that our formation age and field names are in different columns. This is useful for all types of analyses. So let's get the productivity of these wells just for the Upper Cretaceous. So I'll just highlight the rows for our Upper Cretaceous. Control C. Come to the right. Right click. Paste special as values. I'll just drag this down. Now do our calculation. Equal the OEBs divided by the number of wells. Just double click on the lower right corner. Let's reformat that. Make those basically integers and with commas for separators and now we can we'll, we'll just resort this by column L so go over to sort custom sort column L and we're going to go from largest to smallest so now we see that by a mile, Frenchy Draw has the best well production in the Upper Cretaceous, followed by Waltman, Cooper, Tenley Flats. Let's see, where's Teapot Dome? Teapot Dome is getting way down on the list when you look at it. So from an economic point of view, you might want to look at this type of data. I hope you found this tutorial useful and look for other tutorials on Excel for Geologists.